Google may have just saved your display ad revenue. In a surprising announcement, Google has said that they will no longer be getting rid of third-party cookies, which is a big win for anyone relying on ads and affiliate revenue. But don't celebrate just yet, because there's a twist that might still dent your earnings. And don't go anywhere because we'll also dive into some promising signals for sites hit by the recent updates. These traffic boosts might hint at what's coming in the imminent core update. Welcome to another edition of our Search Marketing News Roundup. I'm your host, Matthew Mischuk, and today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Search Intelligence. More on them later. But for now, let's dive into Google's game-changing ad tracking decision. After years of flip-flopping, Google has finally decided to keep third-party cookies in its Chrome browser. And this change could have major implications for any publishers that rely on display ad revenue. It doesn't just affect sites that get Google traffic. So if you get traffic from Facebook, Pinterest, or any other platform, pay close attention. And publishers have been sweating over this for a while. Chromium browsers, which includes popular options like Chrome, Arc, Edge, Opera, make up over 75% of web browsing. Removing third-party cookies from these browsers could have sent display ad revenue plummeting. And we'll get into the details of that in a little bit. But speaking of percentages, did you know that 64% of you guys watching this are not subscribed to this channel? We share the most important news in search marketing every week. So make sure to hit the subscribe button now to stay ahead of your competition. The recent announcement came from Anthony Chavez, vice president of Google's Privacy Sandbox Initiative, a project initially designed to phase out third-party cookies. But instead of axing them completely, Google will now let users make an informed choice about using third-party cookies on Chrome. But hold on, what are cookies and why should you care about them when it comes to your display ad revenue? Cookies are small files placed on your browser to track your browsing behavior. And there are two types, first-party and third-party cookies. First-party cookies are created by the website that you're visiting. They help the site remember your preferences like items in your shopping cart. And their tracking, importantly, doesn't go beyond that website. Third-party cookies, on the other hand, are set by websites other than the one that you're currently on. These cookies follow you around the web, tracking your behavior on all the websites that you visit. Advertising platforms like Meta use these cookies to see the websites that you visit and your behavior on them. They then use this info to decide what ads to show you. For example, if you visit the Nike website and then later see a Nike advert on Instagram, that's likely thanks to a third-party cookie. So how much would removing these third-party cookies impact advertiser tracking capabilities? It's hard to say. Some people believe that third-party cookies could have a major impact on display ad revenue. If ad tracking capabilities decline, companies could spend less money on ads because it's harder for them to tell if they're making a return on their investment, which then means less money for the publishers who would have otherwise shown those ads. So if you're using a programmatic ad service like Raptive or Mediavine, there's a good chance that your ad income could have taken a hit if they'd remove these third-party cookies. Peter Ivara, head of ad tech solutions at Amperity, says the loss of third-party cookies will completely disrupt the digital media ecosystem. But others think that the effects would be minimal. Joe Root, CEO of the publisher tech firm Permutive, says what Google does makes almost no difference. 70% of the internet doesn't have a third-party cookie. Tracking alternatives do exist, although there's no consensus on how well they'd be able to replace third-party cookies. The magnitude of this shift will actually depend on how Google implements the opt-in process. If users have to explicitly opt in to third-party cookies, similar to Apple's pop-up that asks the user if they want to let an app share their data, third-party tracking could remain at risk. But if users are opted in by default and they have to navigate to some hidden menu somewhere to turn it off or opt out, there'd likely be minimal change. There are still a lot of unknowns here, but we consider this news a win for publishers. And speaking of good news for publishers, SEOs are starting to notice an uptick in traffic for sites that were hit by the September helpful content update, as well as the March core update. Lily Ray, VP of SEO at Amsiv Digital, shared a few HCU sites that have seen slight improvements in the last few days. She also reported seeing traffic surges for many other sites, some of which were hit by HCU. Others are reporting similar growth. SEO specialist Devin Wayne reported daily increases of 50 to 70%. And site owner Callum O'Rourke reported that his affected site has been seeing slow and steady growth since the end of May. Could this be a small taste of what Google has planned for the upcoming core update? It's not uncommon to see signs of what's to come a few weeks prior to major updates, almost as if Google was testing out some of what's to come on a small percentage of websites to confirm that it's good to go with 
and then rolling out the update. Still, we'll have to wait and see how this pans out. Lily Ray also shared a timely reminder about the power of branded searches for boosting your search visibility. Recent events have caused searches for CrowdStrike and Secret Service to surge. And using the SEO tool Systrix, Ray found that the CrowdStrike and Secret Service website rankings have skyrocketed. Everyone thinks that the CrowdStrike outage was a developer screw up. Maybe the SEO team was just feeling particularly ambitious. This is more proof that good SEO in 2024 means building a presence beyond just search results. If you can build a strong connection with your audience on other channels, the resulting searches for your brand can improve your rankings. Next up, we've got a surprising study about how your domain extension and your URL slugs could be affecting your rankings. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Search Intelligence. They're a digital PR agency that recently captivated the gaming world with their unique study on how much video game characters would earn in real life. They made a list of the 50 most popular video game characters and then compared their jobs to real world salaries, sparking widespread interest. Their creative campaign landed over 20 high quality links from top publications, including The Express, Houston Press, and many more. This impressive coverage helped secure their clients prominent position in the gaming industry. So if you're looking for a digital PR campaign to level up your link building, head on over to search-intelligence.co.uk. Have you ever wondered whether your top level domain or TLD, for example, whether you use .com or .net affects your rankings? A new study has come out which sheds some light on this. Growth advisor Kevin Indig analyzed a thousand random keywords to see if the TLD has an impact on ranking. And he made some interesting findings. As expected, .com domains dominated, snagging the top five positions 71.8% of the time. Indig says that this is probably because users are more familiar with .com domains. And as we know from the recent leaks, Google heavily monitors click-through rate as a ranking factor, more on that in this video over here, which could lead to .com domains being favored indirectly. .gov domains have the best chance of ranking in the number one spot, followed by .org and .edu. Indig did note that the dominance of .org is likely skewed by Wikipedia's presence. .net and .us domains have a significantly lower chance of ranking in the top two results, so don't use those if you're starting a new project. Indig found that international websites, even those that use .com domains, don't rank particularly well in the US search results. The study also examined URL slugs and subdomains. And surprisingly, including the target keyword in the URL slug did not improve ranking in the top eight positions, which is interesting as it's a common SEO best practice. And there seems to be an SEO benefit to avoiding subdomains. URLs with subdomains appear three times less often than URLs without subdomains. This means that using a URL structure of subdomain domain.com for your content so for example, blog.hubspot.com may make it harder to rank well. And finally, I know you've been waiting for it. It's time for our debate of the week. Do you think Google will make it easy for users to opt out of tracking cookies or will they make it complicated to protect their ad business? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll also definitely enjoy that video. 